Denny Hamlin was one of the first drivers to publicly criticize NASCAR in the next-gen car. In July 2021, and months before its debut, he expressed concerns about safety issues with the new car, following reports of crash tests where the dummy suffered what would be considered fatal injuries. You know, I, when it comes to the crash stuff, you know, I've asked questions to two different NASCAR people, executives. I can't get a response. So that, to me, it makes makes it even scarier so it's like you know it's just man the disconnect right now between all the parties nascar the tracks and the, and the drivers it's just it's tough right now it's, it's not in a good place fast forward to 2022 just a couple of months into the cup series season and multiple drivers had acknowledged that the hits were more intense than the previous car yeah it's, it's been a rough week for me. <laughs> it's a pretty, pretty sore week. I'm not moving as fast as I typically do, but uh, it seems like it, I can still drive the car fast, at least in practice, so that, that part's good. But, yeah, these cars, they, they hit harder than ever. They, they hit really, really hard. They're super solid, and it, uh, yeah, it hurts. In July, NASCAR and the fans saw firsthand the effects of the intensified impacts at Pocono when Kurt Busch backed his number 45 car into the wall during qualifying and was ruled out the next week with concussion-like symptoms. The 44-year-old driver hasn't returned since and announced his retirement from full-time racing just last month. Hamlin was affected by the loss because Busch raced for his 2311 racing team. However, the JGR driver got first-hand experience with a big hit of his own in the regular season finale at Daytona in August, when he led the field across an unexpected wet spot on the super speedway and was the first of several drivers who made a hard right turn into the fence. A month later at Texas, Alex Bowman was involved in what appeared to be a rather innocuous hit, which turned out to be anything but when he was ruled out the following week at Talladega from a concussion. The Hendrick Motorsports driver missing a race, which we now know would be multiple races, struck a nerve with the drivers who came out in mass before the race at the Super Speedway, criticizing NASCAR for taking a step backward in safety. I don't feel like we should have ever been in this position to begin with to need to go forward. We, we should have gone forward with a new opportunity at a, at a new car, in my opinion. I mean, you have all these, all these years of experience and, and knowledge and, and uh, you know, time of racing and crashing these cars and teams working on them and and building them and it just blows me away that we can have something new in 2022 that you know offers all this technology and all this uh all this time and experience of so many just super talented people in this sport and we allow it to go backwards uh you know especially with safety i just think is it's just super surprising to me you know that that we allow that to happen Hamlin also addressed the subject and took his critique game next level. Uh, the car needs to be redesigned. That It needs a full redesign. I mean, it can be still be called next-gen, but it needs to be redesigned. We brought up this, these concerns with NASCAR um, last winter. Um, we actually, as the drivers, didn't do that docu-series last year because we didn't feel comfortable with this next-gen car and the safety uh, the lack of safety testing that had been done before they started announcing that they were going to run it. Um, so it's just we we threw up red flags over a year ago, and they just didn't respond. They just kept pushing that this car's got to be on the racetrack at all cost. At all cost. At all cost. You can see it in Hamlin's eyes and hear it in his voice how serious he was about what he was saying. Those were big accusations. A week later at the Charlotte Roval, NASCAR held its first all-drivers meeting and addressed the concerns with the drivers. The next day, President Steve Phelps talked about what was said. This is, um, I thought the meeting was incredibly productive. Um, the drivers were candid. Um, we showed them a path forward on uh, for example, on the rear of the car to try to take out some of the stiffness that exists, a, a bigger crush panel. Um, but overall, listen, the, the, we want to hear what they have to say. We care about what they say. Uh, and we're going to continue to iterate on the car to make it safer. That was the first and last time Phelps publicly discussed the driver's safety concerns with the next-gen car. On Friday, Phelps did so again during his annual State of the Sport address. He brought up the car's safety in his opening remarks. Um, the car was designed as safety is the number one priority for that car. That's how it was designed. And it was designed 
to make sure that the horrific situation that we saw with uh, with Ryan Newman of the Daytona 500 and the intrusion that happened into his vehicle or the crushed roof that happened with Joey Logano at Talladega, that those things needed, the strength of the car needed to be there. And that is something that was first and foremost um, into why that car was designed. While Phelps insisted that safety of the next-gen car was the number one priority, his remarks immediately after that would suggest otherwise. So a year ago, I think someone asked me, what's, what's the, what keeps you up at night? The car kept me up at night. Wh whether we could put that car on the racetrack at the Clash of Coliseum. You've had you know, supply chain issues and all the rest of it. And if you think about it, get to the Clash of the Coliseum and you don't have a race car, there's no safety net. You can't go back to the old, it's, gone. it's too late, you're done. We wouldn't race. And I know that sounds dramatic, but if you think about it, there was no safety net, no wires. It's our, it was our car, it needed to be on the racetrack. And then working with the race teams and the drivers, we'd make sure the car was, was as racy as it could be. And I think it delivered against that too. There's a lot to unpack there. For starters, there was no plan B, really? How short-sighted do you have to be to not even consider potential problems like supply chain issues, especially on the heels of a worldwide pandemic that had already delayed the car's debut? And why did no one look back at NASCAR's own playbook from 2007 when it introduced the car of tomorrow in the middle of the season? This would have helped teams who ultimately face supply chain issues, but more importantly, it would have allowed the appropriate safety features to be implemented in the car. If that happens, maybe there are no concussions. Maybe Kurt Busch is returning next season. But, as Phelps bluntly admitted, the car needed to be on the racetrack. Or, as Denny Hamlin said at Talladega, at all cost. Simply stated, as much as Phelps wants fans to believe that NASCAR placed a priority on safety with the next-gen car, the organization's actions and now his own words tell a very different story. And unfortunately, due to that lack of a safety net and rushing the car too soon to live racing action, the driver's safety was compromised, and now they are paying the price.